1954, a germ laboratory opened on an island off the northeast coast of the United States. This is a secretive research base which studies the most infectious animal diseases on Earth. Plum Island was chosen carefully. It would house deadly and highly contagious viruses that were too dangerous to be stored on the mainland. You're not allowed to land on the island. If you got anywhere near the island, they'd be right on top of you. The lab's official mission was the study of animal diseases, including bacteria carried by ticks. But scientists also secretly carried out biological warfare experiments. If you look up the goals of biowarfare in the modern times, it's to disable the enemy and make their life miserable. Fifteen kilometres from Plum Island is the village of Lyme. It looks like a wintry postcard, but it's also the site of a modern-day viral outbreak named after the town, Lyme disease. It was here in the small town of Lyme, Connecticut, that the disease was first identified. Pockets of residents started reporting mysterious symptoms which no doctor could identify. That was in 1975. We now know Lyme disease is delivered by the bite of a tick. When a tick infected with the bacteria bites, it transfers the infection via its saliva into the bloodstream. Once there, it moves like a corkscrew and can launch multiple attacks on different parts of the body. This tick, I call it nature's dirty needle. It can bite birds, mammals, marsupials, reptiles, it's a chameleon. It learns how to adapt. It's a survivor. In the late 70s, Dr Joe Barascano was a GP working in a town 30 kilometres from Lyme. I had a lot of patients with this strange constellation of symptoms, this strange illness. Nobody knew what it was. What makes Lyme disease so difficult to diagnose is that it mimics the symptoms of a range of illnesses. The infection is unusual in that it goes to every single part of the body. You might have pain in the joints and see an arthritis doctor. And then you might have heart troubles and see a heart doctor. Then you might have headaches and see a neurologist. Or visual troubles and you start to see an eye doctor. So then they start to label you as being a doctor shopper. And then you know the patient himself or herself may lose confidence and say, well, maybe I am crazy. And that's when the trouble starts. This is Mandy Hughes. Are you able to stand up, honey? And this is what Lyme disease did to her. All right, I'm going to shut this off so we can take you back in the house, OK? OK. okay. What was the pain like? Oh, the pain was, <laughs> it's like being hit by a truck and then being denied any medical treatment. Mandy was a trainer at SeaWorld. At 19, she was bitten by an infected tick. She broke into hives, her temperature soared. It's all over your body and it is excruciating pain. Mandy was quickly diagnosed with Lyme disease. It was treated with antibiotics and she thought she was cured. Then it flared up again, but doctors misdiagnosed the symptoms as multiple sclerosis. 10 years and 20 doctors after she was bitten, a blood test confirmed she still had Lyme disease. How sick were you? I was so sick. I was in a wheelchair. People had to help me get around. I'm this frail, fragile thing. And um, I'm like, if I keep going this pace, you know, I don't know if I'll make it to 30. I don't know if I'll make it to 35. Mandy was infected in Florida in 1995 more than 2,000 kilometres from the first outbreak in Lyme. Well, in the United States, Lyme is the fastest growing infectious disease, and unfortunately, the incidence is increasing year after year. Lyme disease was spreading fast. New cases were being diagnosed across America and beyond. I've seen Lyme patients from Australia who never left the country who definitely had Lyme disease, and there are physicians in Australia who have seen these patients too. And it's here in Australia where the already strange story of Lyme disease gets even stranger. Despite hundreds of cases, our health departments are convinced it's a foreign problem. People just won't listen to you, so your family's forced to 
you know, pretty much send your blood overseas to, to countries that do know about this and fight just to get the basic treatment started to um, save your life because um, I was dying. Do it, do it, do you want to do it? Natalie Young is a Coffs Harbour mum, once extremely active, a talented surfer and a National Parks ranger. Do you remember being bitten by a tick? Yeah, bitten by a lot of ticks. <laughs> um, I was first bitten by 110 ticks in 2002. On one occasion? Yeah, one occasion. I crawled into a nest of ticks. The symptoms started soon after. I mean, I couldn't swallow. I um, lost control of my bladder. I couldn't walk. I lost the ability to talk properly. Just so many symptoms, over 70 symptoms at once. It's just, it's torture, it really is. Dear Matilda, it's your mum. Just wanted you to have this picture. It's full of colour and life. Natalie was so sick, she wrote a farewell letter to her daughter. Yeah, just wanted to add something. And to show her that I was full of life and colour before this, that I wasn't always like this, and <laughs> that I actually loved life. And <laughs> GPs couldn't help Natalie, neither could specialists. She went to 17 doctors. A neurologist even suggested it was all in her head. Eventually, Natalie's blood was sent to the US and Germany for tests. Only then, seven years after she was bitten, was she diagnosed with Lyme disease. One day, my mummy found me crying in my room. But as bad as that is, the story gets worse. Her daughter, Matilda, also has the disease. It's possible Natalie passed it to her during pregnancy. I've cried my eyes out and I blame myself, but now I blame nobody else but the government. A lot of patients come to me with a self-diagnosis of Lyme disease because they've been so fed up and they've gone onto the internet and they have worked out, I might have Lyme disease. Dr Peter Main has a practice near Port Macquarie the area has a high infestation of ticks. He's diagnosed 160 patients from all over the country with Lyme disease. Some have never left Australia. So you find ticks on the cat? We have got a paralysis tick off the cat, yes. Right, OK, yes. that's the tick that's believed to cause Lyme disease in Australia. 20 years ago, a health study concluded Australian ticks didn't carry the disease, and today, despite cases where patients have never left the country, like six-year-old Laura. No, Laura has never been she's out. Never of, left she's never left She's never left the country. Never Our health left. departments uh, still say there's not enough evidence. In America, Lyme disease has been described as a national health crisis. Yes. Would you say it's a national health crisis here in Australia? Oh, it's worse than that. It's not even, an, not even an identified health crisis yet. There's no doubt that she's got Lyme disease on these results that you've sent. So what you're saying um, is that the overseeing body is saying this doesn't exist, let's put our head in the sand about it. They're being a little it. bit more careful than that. They're not saying it doesn't exist. They're just saying there's no proof that it's here. We can't, certainly can't rule out that Lyme disease is acquired in Australia, but the evidence we have to date certainly doesn't support that. Now, maybe, Dr Jeremy McNulty is with New South Wales Health. The department has a well-rehearsed line. In that there's not a lot of evidence that we have Lyme disease here. Which Dr McNulty delivers... While it's possible Lyme disease is here and transmitted locally, we don't have a lot of evidence to support that. Again... While we can't exclude Lyme disease being here, maybe it is, the evidence we have to date really doesn't support that. In and Australia. again... That's not to say it's not here. Maybe it is, maybe the evidence isn't in yet. But New South Wales has been kind of leading the way nationally in terms of getting expert panels reviewing the evidence. So who, who's, who says that New South Wales is leading the way? Uh, well, we do. We have been working... So many people that. disagree with that, Doctor. What we do know from cases all over the world is that early diagnosis can beat it almost every time. But because Lyme disease looks like so many other illnesses, getting that diagnosis is never easy. Take us back, what happened? I got this lump in the side of my neck, which all of a sudden you could kind of see um, all the time. And I thought, okay, that's not 
not really normal or not right. And then I started getting really tired. I was sleeping in the locker room before matches, um, probably not eating well, and then uh, all my glands swelled up. So kind of looked like a hamster at one point with, <laughs> with a, not much of a neck. Sam Stoza's first symptoms surfaced in 2007 at Wimbledon. I think I saw four different doctors at Wimbledon and um, no one could quite put their, put their finger on it. How were you during all of this? I kind of felt like I was banging my head against a wall because I knew there was something not right but nobody could tell me what it is and, and they sent me home with sinusitis and a bit of codeine and, and take that and you'll be fine. Four months later, in the United States, she was diagnosed with Lyme disease. Sam took several months off and treated the disease with antibiotics. I've always said I know I'm a lucky one who got diagnosed quite quickly and um, I do feel for everyone out there who um, hasn't been able to get that help and receive the treatment that they need to simply because um, they live in Australia really. It's really, um, really sad to think that people's lives are kind of um, really suffering when it could be, you know, fixed um, if they got the right help they needed. I've heard this saying that Lyme disease might not kill you but at times you wish that it would. Have you ever felt like that? Yeah, yeah. I um, I still go through those periods, but um, the first two and a half years, I'm just saying, please take me, God, just take me. Here, okay, darling. Natalie and Matilda are taking antibiotics and are getting better. So, would you have been able to do this when you were sick? No, I couldn't even support my own weight on structured land. In so, America, after dolphins? eight months of intravenous so antibiotics. Mandy is almost back to her old self. So I'm just excited that I'm supporting my own weight on the ice. Yeah. <laughs> so am I. 30 years on, and the disease is still a plague on the town of Lyme. Here, many locals blame nearby Plum Island. It's the perfect setting for a conspiracy theory. And even though birds or deer could have carried a virus to the mainland, those who have tracked the devastating disease say it's unlikely. There's been folklore that Lyme was developed there as bio-warfare, and that's rubbish. That's not true at all. In fact, they found Lyme in mummies 5,000 years old in Europe, so obviously that answer is, is moot. <laughs> Could Lyme be in Australia? It'd be silly to think that Lyme is present in every part of the world but not Australia. Of course it is there, of course it is. 